Hi, this is Roy Nicewanger again from MotleyPixel.com. Today I'm going to uh, give you a brief video tour on um, improving the infinity focus on a particular Minolta lens on EOS full frame bodies such as the 5D, 5D Mark II, or uh, the 1D. Um, this is a beautiful lens. This, this particular lens is a, uh, is a Minolta Rocor 58 PF. Uh, F14. Um, I have the ID ring removed on this particular model because I'm still in the midst of adjusting infinity focus. But the main problem here is um, right now um, the rear element uh, group here um, at infinity focus will hit my 5D Mark II mirror. Most likely it'll hit a normal 5D or any full frame EOS body. And that's because Minolta's registry distance is 43. Point five millimeters whereas Canon is 44 millimeters. Roughly all that means is from the bayonet face of the camera to the sensor plane or the film plane um, it's shorter for Minolta. So I need to get this rear group further into the mirror box uh, to achieve infinity focus. I can adjust it a mere millimeter if that and uh, I'm fine uh, with mirror clearance however um, I'm sitting probably somewhere in the neighborhood of um, 20 feet. So in order to uh, uh, get this to work, there are really two options for full frame. I can either A, grind down this rear or what some people call last element uh, group, this, uh, this rim here, uh, mainly the top, um, but if I can remove a millimeter of stock here because if you look at it flush um, it is a convex lens but the mirror the way the mirror operates it's really the uh, the first part of the travel that's catching the top part here so you can either remove some of the uh, lens housing there are a couple ways to do that you can either grind it sand it uh, what I'm going to try to do today is actually turn it in a mini machine lathe uh, the other option you have is to actually grind the mirror and I've seen uh, uh, several examples of this online and frankly because the mirror is not easy to remove on the 5D you have to break the entire body down uh, I would prefer to remove the mirror to do such a job rather than put something like a dental dam with a rubber glove around it and file a mirror because you're just gonna get all sorts of contaminant inside your mirror box something I don't want to explore now what I did this is a great lens, great condition. It has a Jim Buchanan custom EOS mount here. Um, but I want to achieve infinity focus. So I found a um, for repair only lens on eBay, same, same make and model. Uh, the lens was in uh, pretty bad shape, beat up, no fungus, lots of oil on the aperture, stuck aperture. I'm in the uh, midst of trying to restore it. But I think what I want to do um, is try to turn the rear element. This element looks just as good as the one that's on this camera here or this lens here. So what I'm going to do is be very careful with this uh, small machine thread here that threads into the uh, lens assembly. I'm going to use a strip of leather here, wrap it around as such, and then I'm going to put it, with, put it in the uh, mini lathe here in the outside um, chuck jaws and be very very careful because um, I don't want to burr up these threads, so let me mount it. All right, here it is, chucked up. Um, I made sure that I tightened uh, all three uh, jaws evenly. Went back and did a few more snugs. Checked it with, uh, checked for straightness with the uh, dial indicator. Had the right cutting tool. Uh, the half nuts locked. The lead screw is off. I'm ready to go. So drum roll. This thing could fly out. Better hold on to my camera. Here we are. Oh, and also I'm going to do a rotation which is forward on the lathe this way. When it cuts in, that inner ring that holds the element, it should apply clockwise torque to those threads uh, so it won't spin that uh, locking ring out.
it doesn't look like it's uh, straight. I think that's mainly because of the leather. I always want to keep an eye on that element too. I think it's good. Now I thought about uh, taping the element just to protect it from the shavings. All right, just a little bit more to go. Not much. All right, last pass, a little bit faster. All right, now I think I may want to camfer this edge just a little bit. Okay, here's the piece turned. Looks like the threads are all intact just fine. Um, it didn't do too bad. Basically looking at, uh, looking at it from this angle, I just start to see the convex of the lens. Um, no damage to, to, uh, to my eye. Uh, used a brush to lightly uh, evacuate some of that some of those uh, cuttings but here's the uh, here's the one from my good lens I already took it out see the difference here so we're ready to install this one after I do some surface cleaning on it 12 millimeters is the uh, the height of this barrel now I'm at 11 millimeters not bad let's install this one now Okay, and finally uh, with that one installed, so now we're ready to test this on a 5D, keep my fingers crossed, um, but that's a good amount um, less than before, so I've got hopes for this one. Seems to have gone just fine. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, folks, here we are. The Minolta MC Rocor PF5814 is mounted on this 5D Mark II shooting wide open at 1.4. Um, I slapped the lens on the 5D Mark II, focus out to infinity, no mirror interference, so it works like a champ. Uh, previously I had it on, mounted on my 30D crop sensor, and that's where I did the infinity calibration. Um, and so I had no mirror problems with it, but as soon as I put it on the 5D Mark II, full frame, body, the mirror would uh, uh, strike the uh, rear element. Doesn't look like there's any weird aberrations going on uh, with the rear of the lens with the shiny surface. I might end up toning that down a bit with just a black sharpie if I need to. But all in all, successful job. Thanks for watching.